hold a festival. Um, uh, it's a very pagan festival and they do some kind of gross things. I call them gross. They, yeah, <laughs> detestable things um, if you want to go biblical. Um, but yeah, so every year this happens and um, this year is the first year that the, a few ch- local churches and a few Christian organisations have come together to organise a 21-day event called Light Up Hobart. And what happened was in the 21 days, we did evangelism and prayer every night. And in the first three days, we had, well, we had two scheduled worship sets. The first one went for the, right in the beginning for three days straight. So 24-hour prayer and worship constantly here at the church. And then at the last scheduled block was at the end. And that ended up going for seven days. So 24-7, the last worship set went and in that time we were able to meet people on the street bring them to um, coffee van and pancakes that we were having at St David's Cathedral and there we were able to minister and share while people were holding down the fort here and praying and worshipping Um, and it stretched a lot of us actually stretched all of us out of our comfort zones um, out of what we would think was was normal it really, for those who d- decided to participate, not everyone could because they were away, but for those of us who were here participating in the event, God was really doing something in our hearts. It was quite a catalyst for a lot of us into a new season with God and actually a new yearning for a life lived with God, hand in hand, rather than just living life. And then inviting God alongside every now and then. And I was definitely one of those people. Um, that event really was quite a catalyst for me in my life personally and, and um, to do with the church. And it happened when we were get in the getting ready for the event part. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the many wonderful people who did the behind the scenes work and organising And while we were doing that, I found myself thinking, you know, I really want to be involved in more more of these nights. I want to be involved and not just involved as in up here, worship leading or anything. I want to participate spiritually and physically in, in this event. And then I started thinking, You know, I know I have responsibilities, but I really want to show God how much he means to me and how much him coming into to Hobart during this dark time means to me and how much we want it, how much I personally want it, not just as a church. And then I started thinking along the lines of that, I actually really want to be involved in the evangelism too. Now, I'm not an evangelist. Um, I don't have that gifting, but I do believe we are all called to evangelise. And so I really wanted to grow that area in me. I can acknowledge it's not my gifting, but I really, really wanted to be able to do it more often and really well. So I stretched myself and I went along on as many of the, the trips as I could go. And I actually found myself sharing in a new way, in a different way. Um... It really all came to a point at the last night of the, the festival that they were holding. There was a burning of an effigy that they were doing. Um, but before they did that, they actually walked it, or well, paraded it, walked it, from one end, one location to another, where they would burn it at the final destination. So a few of us went to communion and then decided we actually should go down to the location where they burn this thing and um, pray. We should pray and we should go and try and encounter some people while we're there. So we did that. We went down. There was only, I would say, about eight of us. There wasn't that many of us there. But we went down there and as we walked down to the street where they were doing it, we just felt this heaviness. There was like an intense heaviness. And like I had felt, you know, demonic heaviness before, but this was a different heaviness. And um, 
we just looked at each other and were like, are you feeling that? Like, can you feel that right now? And we thought, yeah, yeah, what, what is that? So we asked Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, what's happening? What, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? I know it's heaviness, but what is the cause of this? And God showed us that it was grief. That God was grieving for his children. He was grieving for his kids. He was a father just wanting to be close to his children again. And then I just felt like, oh, I really, I really feel like I need to do something, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what can I do. And then I had this wrestle in my head and it was, it was an intimidating place to be in in the natural as a Christian, right? It's, there's a lot of people there for someone who doesn't evangelize um, or have that gifting. There was a lot of people there and there was like an element of fear of man that came in in that moment. And there was a lot of um, anti-God people as well. So I was just thinking, oh, Holy Spirit, like what do I do? What can I do for you? And in this, as I was asking him, I heard the voice of a lady that was quite heavily involved in Light Up Hobart. And it was a moment where we were talking and I said to her, I remember exactly what I said. I said to her, we want to thank you for coming, well, for flying down. She was not a local, she flew down. We want to thank you for flying down and for helping us warfare in this time. And she looked at me, she smiled, and it was a genuine, genuine, beautiful smile. And what she said to me was what I heard in that moment. She said, what life? I'm dead. Christ now lives. And I just went, whoa, what? So I just thought in that moment, Holy Spirit, I am dead. You have permission to use me however that looks. And I said that out loud. I didn't say that internally. I said that out loud. And then the second I finished that prayer, I felt the wildest manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I have ever felt in my life. And I had shared the gospel in a way that I had never known I could do. And it was all because I had given him the space to do that in me. And every fear that I had of looking foolish, every thing that was telling me, you know, if you do this, people are going to look at you, they might laugh at you, (laughs) they might call you a Jesus freak. Um, And that was, that just all went away. All of that fear went away and was replaced with authority. It was replaced with identity. It was replaced with power, a holy power, a holy authority, a holy identity that was birthed in me that very moment. But God showed me that none of what I had experienced then would have happened if I had not been here night after night being refined in prayer and in worship. None of that would have happened if I had not allowed God to chip away at me, to mould me, to shape me night after night here in obedience to him. Then I was ready for more. And that is what I want to share on today. There is more waiting in God for us. There's an authority that God is wanting to anoint us with. There's an identity God is wanting to anoint us with for the next challenge we face, for the next season that we're about to head into. There's a catalyst moment in our lives waiting, but it starts in the consecration. It starts in the set-apartness. It starts in the furnace of his refining fire. For us to go forward, we need to be refined. We need to get rid of the stuff that we're walking around with, stuff that we're walking around with and labelling it as, well, it's just who I am, when actually it's not who we are. It's not at all who we are. It's not who God made us to be, but it's actually the result of being shaped by a hard, unloving, unforgiving, 
cold world and then not leaving that at the feet of Jesus, not allowing Jesus to take that from us and then carrying it around. Jesus is the one who is meant to shape us. He's the one who is meant to mould us. We are called to be in the world, not of the world. We are called to be in the world, but not a byproduct of the world. And I, and I really wanted to say, a refiner's fire. When we talk about fire, sometimes there is a fear that comes in because we don't know what God is going to do. We don't know what, what the refinement is going to look like. So we choose to not give it over to God. But a refiner's fire, does not. I googled it, it does not consume, but rather it makes the metal better and more valuable. Okay? The fire is not meant to consume you in the way the world wants consumption to look, but it's meant to make you better and more of more value. Gold that has been taken out of the dirt and separated, placed into a furnace, comes out brighter. It can never go back. It can never have blemishes again because it has been refined in the fire let your lives so shine before all men that they may see your holy lives and give glory to your father who is in heaven now it's funny that pastor nico shared shared all of that because um, of chris coming down but i felt i wrote down what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is he was saying that there is a season of go coming. There's a season of go coming and it's, it's a theme for the year. There's a season of go coming but before the go comes, there needs to be a process of waiting. There needs to be a process of refining because we can give. Before we can give, there needs to be a time of refreshment. Before, we can't go without being equipped and we can't give from an empty cup. And a great example of this is Acts chapter 1. Right at the beginning, we find the story of Pentecost, right? We find the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We find the birth of the church. Um, But before any of that could happen, in the Gospels it says... Jesus said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel, cleanse the lepers and cast out devils. But in this chapter he says, but before you go, wait. Wait, for you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit and he will give you authority and power to go into the world. Go. But before you go, wait. Because there is something in the waiting that you need. There is a baptism in the waiting that you need in order to go. There is a power and an authority that can be found in the waiting that will sustain you as you go. And while I was asking God about this message and how how do I put it together today, for today, God, how do I deliver this message? And as he gave all these things to me, I thought, whoa, this is a message of repentance. This is a message of being sanct- God wants us to be sanctified again. God wants us to be consecrated again. But the more I dove into it, the more I heard the Lord say, yes, I do want those things. But this message is about abiding This message is about me wanting you to be repentant, me wanting you to be consecrated and set apart for me. But it's actually about abiding in me, abiding in the vine, abiding in the presence of our Lord, abiding in the love of God. And then all these things will follow. Sanctification, repentance, they will follow when we're in the love of God because the word says it is the kindness of God that leads to repentance. 
It is the love of God and the love for God that leads to repentance. And when we go back to what I was sharing about the disciples, when we look back on the upper room story, the disciples came to a place of waiting, waiting in prayer and in worship, an act of obedience to the task their Lord and Saviour, their friend, had just asked them to do. They literally went and set themselves apart from the rest of the world so that they could dedicate their time to abiding in the promise and in the presence of God. And I believe that in that time of abiding, in that time of prayer and worship, that the disciples were being chipped away. They were being chipped at. God was working at them. God was molding them. God was shaping them. He was getting off everything that would later hold the disciples captive, everything that would be a stumbling block later on, everything that would eventually drain the love and the passion right out of them. He chipped at everything. And then when the Holy Spirit fire fell, when the refining fire fell, all the crumbs from the chipping got burnt up. All of that stuff God took off and threw on the ground as he was purifying them, got burnt up in the holy fire. And they were in that moment refined and made new. Any fear, any habits, any self-image issues, any insecurities, any religious thinking that they were holding on to that they might not even have known they had, They got burnt up in that moment and they spoke in tongues and then they went. We can even talk about the fact that they spoke in tongues. That's something that still to this day can be called quite a foolish thing. But they were in full authority, in full power, baptised with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And then they went into into the world. In obedience, in love, they went and set themselves apart. They separated themselves from the things of the world. They waited, they abided. And in the abiding, they were equipped, they were anointed, they were positioned, and then they could go in full power and full authority. Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I didn't want to take too long today because I so I feel the same in my spirit today that there is a work that God wants to do today and for us to go forward. I'm so glad you said that what you said today because there is a season coming that we need to be ready for and the only way that we can get ready is to allow God to get us ready. We can do nothing in our own strength. We can accomplish nothing in our own strength. And even if we did, eventually there is a point where you will be drained. You will be empty. You will be tired. But it's the abiding that sustains you. It's the anointing in the abiding that sustains you. It's in the abiding where all that stuff, all that insecurity, I felt insecurity that I didn't know I had. When I went to that that moment to pray, I didn't know I had insecurities. I thought, and I can look back at it now and say, I thought highly of myself in that moment. But it was through every night being here, separating myself from from thoughts that would cause me to think highly of myself, from my, my beautiful family, sacrificing time with my family, sacrificing time doing the things I loved, sitting right there at the feet of Jesus, at the altar, And letting him refine me. Because I can guarantee you, I started every worship and every prayer with, God, you are glorious. I love you so much. And then he would say, I love you too. But do you remember this thing that happened a while ago? 
yeah, you, you're, you're not forgiving. You're not, you, you haven't forgiven that person. Like, God, I, didn't, I wasn't upset about that. No, you were upset about that. Did you want me to take that? Did you want me to sort that out for you? It's like, oh, yeah, well, if you say that that was there, God, then I trust you. And it was like being chipped at every night until at the moment I'm like, I don't even recognize myself anymore. And that's the point. I don't want to look like me. I want to look like Jesus. I don't want to sound like me. I want to sound like Jesus. It's not about me. Jesus didn't die so that I could sit there and just watch things unfold. He died. He gave us his body and his blood so that we can partake in him, so that we can Go for him so we can be in relationship with him, so that we can be with him now and evermore. He didn't die so that we could just come to church on Sunday. He didn't die so that we can hold on to the stuff of the world, so that we can hold on to unforgiveness because he forgave. He forgave us for being the reason why he went to the cross. So today, can I have the band up? Jesus wants wants you. He doesn't necessarily want what you can do for him. That follows later. But right now, Jesus wants you. Your heart. That's all he's ever wanted. And when we look at this passage, uh, at what I felt in that time. And there's a more in God. He's a father who wants to give his children more, but he is also a father who corrects. He doesn't want us to carry these things anymore. And I felt, I still feel in my spirit, the Lord is saying that there is a time coming we need to be ready for. And the only time, and the only way to get through what is coming, to get through without being drained or overtaken, is to be refined in the fire. And not just when we talk about consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We're not just talking about signs and miracles. They're they're awesome, but we're not just talking about them in particular. We're talking wonders about how how our lives are lived. How we are still standing when the world has tried everything to get us to fall over. Standing firm on the foundation that is Jesus. In the world, but not a byproduct of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I wrote this at the end there. I didn't fully write it out because I just want Holy Spirit to, to speak to you personally at this time. But there is a time coming, and like Pastor Joanne said today, there is a time coming where we won't be able to, to, take, to make the time to sit at the feet of Jesus anymore. We would have run out of time. There is a season coming that God wants us to be ready for, not knocked off of our feet by this, this coming. There will be a time where it will be our last time to consecrate ourselves again. There will be a time where it will be our last time to set ourselves apart from the world before we see Jesus. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, make the most of the time you have. For it is precious. It is so precious.
And I know that we've, over years and years, this word has been used in ways that it's not intended to. This word of repentance has been used in ways that can hurt, can judge, can, can cause heartache. That is not God's heart today. That's not his heart for you to feel hurt. But he wants you to come and lay it at his feet, to give it over, to repent, to ask for forgiveness of anything that you might be holding on to and to let him chip that off of you, burn it up in his holy fire and refine you, anoint you to baptize you with a new identity, a Christ-like identity, a new authority, a new power. So I want to leave room today. We're happy to pray with people. If, if If you feel the tugging of the Lord on your heart, if you feel like this is Okay, Pastor Joanne has said it once. Pastor Nico has said it twice. Okay, this this is the third time that they've talked about needing to make life right with God. Maybe God is saying something to me right now. So I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is that you? Holy Spirit, are you looking for me? Jesus, are you looking for me? Are you knocking on my door right now? And if that is you, God, I yield to you. I submit unto you right now, God. If that is you today, if if you feel that knocking, And you need to recommit your life. And I want to give you the space to do that. We're happy to pray with you, to lead you in that time. But I really, really, really urge you not to ignore that today. And if you feel in your stomach, I can feel like there's someone, your stomach is burning. It feels like there's a fire in your belly. And you can feel God is wanting to burn off some things in your life. Some choices you might have made. Some things you might have said. I urge you, give in to that. Give in to God this morning. Let Him take that burden off of your back. Come and do business with God today. Don't walk out of here with that burning in your stomach. Don't walk out of here not making right with God because our time is precious. It is so precious. It's in the place of abiding where we say, God, I love you so much. And God says, I love you too, my child. And because I love you, I want to show you that you're carrying something that's not good for you. Because that'll cause you to sink. Would you please place it into my hands and let me get rid of it? It's in the place of abiding where God said, where we say, God, you're so precious. Show me your glory. Show me your face. And God says, okay. But first, I require you to have clean hands and a pure heart. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to end by reading you this verse from Malachi 3, verse 2 to 4. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. So we're going to worship. 
And if that's you today, again, I just encourage you, come sit at the altar. Come into the inner court today. Don't dwell on the outer court. Come in, right in, right into the inner court. Even now as I'm talking, if you feel that, just come in. Come into the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we give you permission today. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to show us what is required of us today. We ask you to show us your presence today. We ask you to baptize us, Father, in a new identity, in your identity, Lord. We want to leave here looking like Jesus and smelling like heaven. So purify us today, Holy Spirit. Refine us today, God. We submit ourselves into your hands, God. We love you. We love you. We love you.